get him out. In a world where innocence is stolen and hope seems a distant dream. This little girl on the train is so her stuffed animal dream. Just one the there are those who dare to fight against the darkness. Behind. Tim and Catherine Ballard stood as beacons of light, venturing where few would dare to rescue the voiceless. But now, these heroes face their most unexpected and harrowing battle yet. Not in the shadows of a trafficker's den, but in the glaring spotlight of a courtroom. Tim Ballard reported sexual misconduct allegations. The suit described the couple's ruse. Ballard's wife is now being included in a lawsuit linked to their mission, their family, their very legacy hangs in the balance. Imagine dedicating your life to the noblest cause rescuing thousands of children from the clutches of evil, only to find yourself in a web of what seems to be unfounded accusations and outright lies. In the darkest hours, when heroes fall, will we stand by and watch? Or will we rise to lift them as they have lifted so many? The fate of the Ballard family and the countless lives they've touched now rests in our hands. Meet Tim and Catherine Ballard, a couple united not only by love and family, but also by a profound commitment to God and to a humanitarian cause. Their remarkable journey, though not scripted for cinema, became the inspiration behind the acclaimed film Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. The film based on the life of Tim Ballard. He's also a former deputy uh, department of Homeland Security agent, and Tim's live with us in studio. So Touching welcome. hearts, both nationally and internationally. La historia de Tim Ballard, un ex agente federal. Ballard's path shifted dramatically from government service to a bold and relentless fight against child trafficking. Catherine, his equal in strength and resolve, stands as a pillar of support. There wasn't ever a moment where we said, let's dedicate our lives to humanitarian causes. We, it just happened. You know, we never foresaw us taking on this role of, of being a big voice for human trafficking. That, that wasn't what we were setting out to do. Balancing the demands of aiding Tim's missions with the care of their nine children. Their family is unique, including two children whom Tim personally rescued during a daring operation in Haiti. Each aspect of their life together speaks volumes of their extraordinary commitment and love. I had to leave the house, right? Yeah. <laughs> in their united front, they established Operation Underground Railroad, shining a light of hope in the darkest corners of human trafficking. Their mission is clear, to dismantle the chains of child exploitation, not just in the U.S. They've done jumps everywhere throughout the world, rescued kids, and then helped them get to a safe place with their aftercare programs. The impact of their work resonates far and wide celebrated by communities, acclaimed in the media, and supported by a global network of allies. The Ballards, along with their brave partners, have transformed personal sacrifice into a worldwide crusade. So I have a project that's under Operation Underground Railroad called Children Need Families. Primarily what we do is fund adoptions or offer grants. Liberating over 7,000 women and children from the grips of trafficking, Yet, at this apex of their endeavors, they confront an unexpected and daunting challenge. This new battle poses a threat, not only to their life's work, but also to the very essence of their family unit. In this critical moment, a pivotal question looms. Will we, their community of supporters, stand by them as steadfastly as they have stood for the voiceless and vulnerable? In the wake of triumph often comes trial. The very success that brought their noble cause to light has cast an unforeseen shadow over their lives. Just after Tim suggested he may run for the U.S. Senate, 
A group of women have come forward with grave allegations against the Ballards. For the woman accusing Ballard spoke publicly alleging sexual These assault. These accusations have not only stunned their supporters, but have also ignited a media firestorm. The charges are severe, threatening not just the reputation of the Ballard family, but their entire livelihood. Tim and Catherine, once hailed as heroes, now find themselves in the eye of a legal and public relations hurricane. The irony is bitter. A family that has fought tirelessly against abuse and exploitation now stands accused of the very acts they've dedicated their lives to eradicating. It was the largest child rescue that I've ever heard of. We, we rescued over 120 victims. The legal battle looms large, with mounting costs that threaten to bankrupt the family. Every dollar spent in courtrooms is a dollar taken away from their mission of rescue and rehabilitation. The potential financial ruin is not just a personal catastrophe for the Ballards. It's a direct hit to the heart of their life-saving operations. As the Ballards navigate these troubled waters, the question remains. Will justice prevail? Or will accusations drown out years of selfless service? My husband has just this light. He's able to see good in the world, you know, and he has a lot of optimism, a lot of strength. I didn't want to see that taken away. I didn't. Some accusers who worked undercover assumed the roles of wives or girlfriends to Ballard and other operatives during missions. In technical terms, this is called cover for status. As an undercover couple, they could go into strip clubs, bars, dirty spas, and to places where child traffickers do business and block for each other so neither would be expected to engage in sex with children or adult sex workers. Once people are being trafficked, they're being enslaved. There's really only one way to get them out. You have to go into that black market and filtrate it because otherwise you're not gonna know what's happening and no one's gonna know what's happening. The undercover piece is that important. We look for people who have the law enforcement, military skills, but even the more important skill is actors. You've got to be able to play the role that we need you to play, whatever that might be, to infiltrate. I was approached by a friend. There was a search for the Ukrainian people women who can support operation. They, of course, know that since six, six years old, I was performed a lot as an actress. Then in Amsterdam, I also took some courses and I performed here as well. They asked me if I would like to, to be a part of it. I'm an and I work with Tim Ballard in a few undercover operations. One of them were in Mexico, uh, where we helped to arrest a pedophile who was quite local of his sexual preferences. In that operation, I played a teenager and uh, I was completely safe. I felt safe. Uh, even though we were about to meet the, our target, I felt guarded, I felt that, um, yeah, uh, I'm in a safe space. The, I was treated well. I had my own uh, hotel room. Again, uh, I believe that that operation was extremely successful and was great to be in, in, in such place to see that we actually can make a difference and save children's lives. While maintaining a credible cover to be in these trafficking dens and rescue children, some of those suing participated in real-life rescue operations. Tim and the entire operations team did such a great job trying to lure him out using different techniques and tools to the point where he just couldn't say no. We devised this plan that Tim and I were business partners and my character was in the process of trafficking young girls and looking to get into children from Ukraine. Hey there, my name is... I have been an undercover operator with OUR for over a year. I worked on various missions with Tim Ballard specifically, ranging from different countries, different continents. And during my time working with Tim, there has been zero inappropriate behavior, any sexual contact, any inappropriate sexual contact whatsoever before, during, or after a mission. Everything was kept very um, respectful, very professional. In fact, I think the OUR team went above and beyond to make sure the safety of both 
the operators and the victims and anybody involved in a mission. During my time in our different missions, we had to deploy different tactics depending on the scenarios, one of which was the couples rouge, um, which involved us posing as a couple. During those missions specifically, there was again absolutely zero sexual contact, touching, anything inappropriate of that nature. Everything was very much professional and respectful through and through from start to finish. Where children were saved and traffickers taken down by using this cover for status tactic, none of them made a single complaint, not until later, in some cases years later. If you were being assaulted, why did you keep going back? Um, Was it only after the success of Sound of Freedom that they somehow became victims? Even though they showed up multiple times for training and or operations well after the alleged abuse took place? Consider the case of one accuser on July 20, 2023. One of the former operator turned plaintiffs confessed to a colleague the following in a text message. I'm love with my boss, who is married. How did that happen? She also texted, why does everyone put Catherine on a freaking pedestal? She's not perfect. I'm not jealous. It's just annoying as shit. She gives up so much blah blah blah. Is it a coincidence she sued Catherine for sexual assault while providing no evidence of how she could have done anything like that? The lawsuit states that Catherine is promoting a false narrative against the alleged victims, saying they're coming forward because Tim is a public figure. Now you are. Catherine Ballard, you are being personally sued by these women. And uh, that was a surprise. I haven't met most of these women. And the ones that I have met, well, have I only met one? Well, it's not true. I don't, I don't even know these women. I didn't know any of them were ever operators, actually. One plaintiff who accused Tim of coercing her into compromising situations, was actually the architect of her own undercover strategy. She claims Tim forced her to take sexy pictures. The truth in her own words written on a text message to a colleague, she said, the girl trafficking the girls was via escorts, so I got infiltrated through escorting a fake website we made. I had to take boudoir photos. The pictures are only on my burner. I was not naked. My husband knew I did it at the time even. Text messages between this operator and those helping her show how proactive she was without Ballard participation. Ironically, Ballard doesn't recall seeing pictures and did not participate with her on this particular operational trip to Mexico City when she used them. Further complicating the narrative, one accuser's past statements and actions tell a story of respect and trust in Tim Ballard. Just weeks before joining the lawsuit, she wrote passionately in defense of Ballard's character and methods, a stark contrast to her current stance. It's important to note that she wrote this email two weeks after she had resigned amicably from Ballard's employment. The couple's ruse is a well thought out process. It comes with training and you have to trust your partner. Traffickers are raping and selling children for sex and are smart. You have to be believable. Leading up to an operation, details are being made, including locations, safe houses, prep houses, prep locations, tattoo artists, makeup artists, camera crew, flights, backup operators, and so forth. We also all have burner cell phones that we use only on operations. These cell phones also need credibility. So leading up to all operations, we have to preload back and forth to either the couple acting as a couple on the op or the group going in general. The reason is that traffickers have the technology to lift content from your phone to get intel. They also have grabbed phones out of our hands to look at accuracy, text messages, pictures, and flights to assure them we are not cops or undercover operatives. I have been working with Tim Ballard for almost one year I have felt safe being Tim's partner in every operation I have been on. I have never been taken advantage of. He has always respected me and all the other operators around me. She continues, 
Tim has devoted much of his life to helping everyone around him. All these negative media, lies, and accusations are doing nothing but tearing families apart, not rescuing children, and exposing tactics that we use every day to save children that we might not be able to use anymore. Child trafficking is the darkest, most dangerous, and most disgusting thing on this earth. Going in to meet a trafficker with polite manners and tea will not save a child. You have to speak their language, look like them, and get in their head. It is a place where the average person can't go and most likely can't understand the world. But thank goodness we have people who can go to that world and do understand it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to save children. You can't teach this anywhere. It is a gift God has given certain people to do. So can we please stop exposing the tactics and clear Tim Ballard's good name so we can continue saving children? Only two weeks after writing this glowing endorsement of Ballard, she sued him for sexual assault. So, she is either lying in this well-thought-out email, or she is lying to the court. Either way, she is lying. Why did she change her narrative so quickly? Was she recruited? After all, the accusers have already reached out to other colleagues of Ballard who had no complaints to see if they would like to join the lawsuit. There was another operation which also was part of, um, uh, we met a woman who was selling uh, kids uh, in her salon um, and uh, before going there we discussed what we were going to say, what we were going to do, we agreed upon um, our steps and nothing was beyond which we agreed on. Uh, we played a couple and um, we followed the couple rules uh, again, it was nothing inappropriate. I believe that Tim uh, has the best intention in his heart and what he is doing um, for the purpose of uh, yeah, produce stop sexual exploitation of women out of their will and children. Um, do you think that Tim is innocent of these accusations? Yes. Yes. It's heartbreaking to watch this go out there and and we know the truth and we have the truth and we've just been muffled we have not been able to get anything out there were operations some of them were there they were in a cover for status style of operation where you are playing a role they were playing the role as a couple that protects the operatives that protects the children these are these are the things that you do so there are pieces of truth in there, and then there's just blatant lies. And I know they're lies because I, I know the evidence, and I know my husband, and he's not perfect. He's not perfect. And trying to figure out how to rescue over 7,000 children, not just him personally, but through his organization, and as he's led teams and, and taught people how to do this. This has been groundbreaking work. So you're going to learn things. You're going to be like, okay, we ran into this situation and that could have been dangerous. Let's adjust. This has definitely been like, a, oh, okay. I guess we shouldn't do operations this way anymore, which is it's, it's unfortunate because they were rescuing people. I'm, I support my husband. We're together in this. This whole thing breaks my heart. I'm watching these women, these accusers, they were my friends, saying we didn't rescue any kids. They were there. We did take down traffickers. We did rescue kids. Now it's important to note that two of them didn't even make it on operations. They were cut for extremely inappropriate behavior. One of them was kicked out of a training by another person that I asked to kick him out because they invited me, this person invited me, to go up to her hotel room in a way that was extremely inappropriate. Another one was blocked by me because she was being very inappropriate, way outside of the lines. And uh, she kept trying to get a hold of me multiple times. This will all come out. One of the pr people suing me, I've never even met. Never been in the same room. Um, now the few that actually went on operations, I mean, we rescued kids together. We risked our lives together. We cried with victims together. And they're acting like 
nothing ever happened. Um, so it's heartbreaking to me because I still hold them as heroes, but I can't stand by and let them attack this cause and lie about real life operations where real kids' lives are at stake. And my family is at stake, I can't. I've got to stand up and tell the truth and it, it hurts because at the same time I still respect and hold them as heroes. The lawsuit against Tim and Catherine Ballard is not just a legal battle. It's a storm that threatens everything they have built. Financially, the stakes are monumental. Legal defense is not just costly. It's a vortex draining resources at an alarming rate. Resources that were once channeled into life-saving operations are now diverted to court fees and legal expenses. The hardest part for me was that they sued Children Need Families, which was my project under Operation Underground Railroad. And I just love being a part of that work. It's so exciting to think that you're bringing a child out of an orphanage out of a situation like that and into a home. It doesn't end with bringing them into the home. There's a lot of, a lot of work. When I found out that Children Need Families had been sued, that, that has really, that's really affected me. We had 25 families in the process of, of filling out their applications. Five families already completed. They, they just needed the funds. And, and everything was stopped. And, oh, that just makes me sad. Do they realize that those are children in orphanages? Adoption already takes so long, so long. If I could change one thing about adoption, I would change how long it takes. Because the quicker you can get them out of an orphanage, into a home, the better for that child. And I still cannot understand. Children Need Families doesn't have its own account. We have no funds. The funds were being given to us by OUR. And so there is nothing to sue. There's not, there's not like a piggy bank of money. It literally just stopped the project. That's it. It just stopped it. And I would like to know why. How did these children hurt you? Oh, it just, it makes me really sad. I don't understand. I don't understand why, why you would want to put a stop to this. So that, that has been really hard. The destruction that has already happened because of these lawsuits is immeasurable. Operations on three different continents have already been destroyed. One was a North Korean trafficking ring that was taking women and children from North Korea into Europe, into Mexico, into Los Angeles. It's over uh, because of what's been revealed in the lawsuits. Two different locations in Mexico, one in particular that I want to talk about with one operator. Uh, who was heroic and I still hold as a hero even though she is attacking me with exaggerations and lies. Um, she was my partner on probably a dozen different operations. She came back dozens of times, was so good at her job, we had her as a trainer. She trained on multiple continents, other people to do the status for cover couples tactic. Uh, we infiltrated probably one of the most dangerous traffickers in Mexico. Uh, this person had the police in her pocket. She had a doctor 
on, on call that would come to the sex party she would hold with children. The youngest boy she was trafficking was uh, six years old. And the doctor came to sew up the children after they were raped so that she could uh, get them back in the market within six weeks, she said. Basically like an, a, a quick episiotomy on these children. That's how evil she was. And without the couple's tactic, it never would have happened. And she knows this. This operator who's suing me knows this. We infiltrated using that technique. And that case has been exposed. She names the names. She names the places. I've got calls from Mexico saying what has happened. Everyone's been exposed all the time and money and disguises. She's hiding behind an acronym so her family is safe. My family is not. The operators in Mexico are not. It's all been exposed. Uh, my kids go to school every day and I have to wonder every day, are they gonna come home? My family's terrified. On top of all the other stuff that's happening, we've been exposed to dangerous traffickers who have deep connections to cartels, are the cartel, and have the police in their pocket. She focuses on dirty things that I said as my undercover persona. I see your ID just so I know your real name. I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't. Want to over. You know what I mean. Well, also like, baby, you just got. This Coca. is my real name. Coca. When we go into these dirty places, when we go into the dirty beach club where we have to establish credibility, whether we're in a room or outside, you don't break character. You don't know where cameras are. So I'm saying dirty things all the time. And she knows I'm saying it as my undercover persona, but in the lawsuit, she takes these dirty things I'm saying and pins it on Tim, as if Tim is saying it. And she knows better. I know these operations are so draining and emotionally damaging to all of us, all the operators, but that is not an excuse to lie about me or these operations. The couple's status for cover tactic has rescued dozens of girls and now it can't be used again and that's tragic fortunately this operator made a video months after these operations where she said that inappropriate things happened declaring that nothing inappropriate even remotely happened okay this is my acknowledgement i and went down to bbi during that time and in cozumel from may 25th to june 8th of 2021 um in cozumel and in bbi played as part of the couple ruse with Tim and just wanted to acknowledge that there, we kept all of the boundaries there. And I will read them, no kissing on the lips, touching or exposing private parts, including breasts and genitalia, and any other thing you can imagine, we kept really strict boundaries. So um, that's my acknowledgement. And she knows better. But to make a case, that's what they're gonna do. That's what all of them are doing. All these weird and crazy things that I'm being quoted as saying, that's my undercover persona, whether it's in a training, in a training text, or in undercover um, text messages. These are undercover conversations that have to be dirty. It's not me saying it. But that's what they're focusing on because that's what the, the, the case requires in order to gain the, the millions they seek. Um, instead of focusing on what they actually did heroically, which was to rescue children who are now in jeopardy. It's so emotionally draining, it's so emotionally damaging. I wonder if those operators and those accusers have also reflected on the immediate cost, the damages that have already happened, not to mention the future damage that will come if they prevail and take resources away from the rescue operations. And I wonder if they think it's worth it. Has it been worth it? To sit silently and collect whatever millions you dreamed of? And then I ask myself, was it worth it? Was it worth it to go through all that pain and suffering? That infiltration, risking our lives, all these lawsuits that have come because of this? Was it worth it to get that last trafficker in Mexico? And I have to say yes, it was worth it. I would do it again, I might lose everything.
but it was worth it. The threat of bankruptcy looms large, a specter that endangers not just the Ballard family, but the very future of their mission. Now, at this critical juncture, the Ballard family reaches out for your support. This is more than a call for help. It's an invitation to stand for justice, to uphold the values of compassion and bravery that Tim and Catherine have embodied throughout their journey. Your contribution to the Ballard Family Defense Fund is not just a donation. It's a powerful statement. It's a declaration that you believe in the power of truth and the importance of fighting against unjust accusations. Every dollar you give strengthens their ability to defend themselves and continue their vital work. The time to act is now. Your immediate support can make a real difference. It can help cover legal expenses, protect the family from financial ruin, and ensure that their mission to save and rehabilitate children doesn't falter in these trying times. Donating is simple. Click the link below to contribute. Whether it's a small amount or a larger contribution, your support is invaluable. Share this message with your friends and family and let them know why this cause matters. Together, we can create a wave of support that can turn the tide in favor of the Ballard family. I'd like to stick around. I'd like to continue these rescue efforts. Well, actually, we would like to continue in this fight. I am so in love with this woman. She uh, makes it possible. I wouldn't even be able to have any fight left in me were it not for your light. And I'm so grateful to, to Catherine. I'm so grateful to Alex Cuadro and Troy Abels and the friends who put this video together as a service to us to get the truth out. And like I was saying, we just want to get back to work. Yeah, our hope is to be able to get back to doing the things that, that we've dedicated our life to. I want to get back to adoptions. It means so much to me and to just helping the women and children around the world. We, we've been fortunate to have, to have a taste of what it feels like to help people. And it's been hard. It's been hard. The suffering continues and we're just having to fight off lies. So that's been hard. We want to get back to work. That's right. And, and something else I want you all to know, as one of many, many lies in the, in the lawsuits, if you want to talk about credibility, they have none. Uh, I've seen reports that we have up to $14 million socked away somewhere to, you know, don't feel sorry for us because we have all this money. That's complete nonsense. We are literally, with Catherine as my witness, we're on the verge of bankruptcy. We don't have the money to fight this. Um, and contrary to what they want to believe, I'm not some big owner in Sound of Freedom, okay? Um, so we are, we are suffering, and the work is suffering. Yeah, we need help. We, we have nine children, and the Lord has blessed us so much. We feel so grateful, but Fighting, fighting these lies is way more money than we have. 100% of the money donated is going to the Ballard Family Defense Fund. It's going to pay our legal fees to defend and get the truth out so that the truth can prevail and the truth can set us free. Free to do the work that we feel called to do. So thank you and God bless. Thank you so much.